Hey y'all, it's Tasha. We are back with season 13, Married at First Sight. We are reviewing part one of the reunion show. So y'all, we are this close to being done with season 13 and Married at First Sight. Thank you, baby Jesus. <laughs> but the reunion spilled all kind of tea, y'all. So let's get into what went down at the reunion last night. So host was Kevin Frazier. He's been hosting the reunion for the past couple seasons. And honestly, I think he does a decent job, especially of asking the questions that I feel like the viewer really wants to know from the couples without dragging the whole situation out and holding people accountable. So he lets us know that it's been four months between decision day and where they are now and they are meeting virtually because of the whole panorama. Um, so he's not actually in the room with the couples. They're talking to him virtually through the TV screen. So I guess probably may maybe the same space per se as, as the same location, but just sitting in different spots um, so that they can social distance and everything. So we're going to go through um, couple by couple with what we did see on the reunion last night. And then we'll kind of talk about the guys getting together all in one group towards the end to make it a little bit easier to follow so first couple we're going to talk about is brent and ryan and child y'all saw that brent came out with the girls on display okay she's like i'm gonna hit him one more time to let him know what he missed out on because he ain't ever touching this again okay <laughs> she had to let him know and i was like you better serve the girls brent so they did share the two of them don't really communicate, which I'm like, y'all really don't have no reason to communicate. You didn't really build deep down, dark communicate. I mean, relationship with each other. You have no kids. So where, why is there a reason to really communicate between the two of you? I don't know, but they say they don't, but there's no bad, bad blood between the two of them. Ryan says he regrets being more straightforward with Brent and um, he's learned to be a better communicator in the future. He, ha he says he has tried to learn to consider the emotions and feelings of other people because usually he just kind of considers himself in the moment. Brent says that she's learned that she can be more open-minded with the people that she interacts with. And I feel like everything that they're saying are what we've heard not only all season from them, but what we also heard on decision day from them as well. So I'm like, let's wrap it up and move on to something we have not heard yet before from the two of you. Okay. We then see Ryan's sister Alexia or Alexa, I think that's her name, comes out and she has the same monotone voice as Ryan. I don't know why I was just picking up on this when they when she came out and they showed them being in the same room, almost talking at the same time. I was like, both of them just really talk like they don't have much emotion going on through their voice or through their face. And it's just pretty annoying <laughs> between the two of them. But she does have great things to say. She says that Ryan could really use a girl like Brent. She said that their family really loved having her. They do bring up the conversation that she had with Brent about, you know, Ryan really being focused and maybe being a distraction or his past um, coming back since really he kind of started pulling back once they got back home from the honeymoon. Ryan said that he could understood why his sister felt that way that they had lived together for four years and she had basically seen that behavior from him. So he really didn't see it wasn't really a negative as to her saying that because it, it really wasn't a lie it was the truth from his past behavior ryan said that right after that conversation that his sister did have with brent that she did his sister had texted him and she basically said that his sister kind of got in his ass from what brent was saying and i was like i could really appreciate that because so many times um if there is a sibling involved or of course a mom then they kind of just coddle and take up for the man because that is you know their sibling or their son so to see her actually be like uh-uh i ain't having it not on my watch you need to get yourself together and fly right or leave this girl alone so i really did like that so then we see kevin ask the sister you know how, if she kind of still feel that way about brent as far as the sister says she was feeling bad for her based on which everything she was going through with, with ryan and she said, well, uh, it changed a bit because I found out that Brent was seeing someone else. And we was just like, er, record scratch. I honestly had heard this rumor probably just a couple weeks ago for the very first time that she had been um, possibly dating someone while she was, you know, going through the whole process. So I was curious to see uh, what information they were going to share because I had not heard a whole bunch of details about it versus the whole um, Bow and Zach situation that we heard going around. We didn't hear as much um, as Brent being out there. 
But Brent ends up saying that it isn't true. Um, and the sister was like, and she's still with the person. Brent says that she did meet someone while they were going through the experiment. But at that time, it did not go any further. And it only went further after decision day. And even now, since then, things are over with that person. And I'm just like, yeah, Brent, that's foul. Although I don't think if she was, you know, she had exchanged numbers with this person and there was texting going on. From what we saw, I still don't think it blocked her off or hindered her from moving forward or attempting to build something with Ryan. I don't feel like it had any adverse reaction as far as where their relationship could have gone because I didn't see a shift in her um strong enough that it would have been based on an outside influence rather than the lack of communication and interaction that she was getting from ryan that basically influenced her to pretty much be checked out so while if she did do that that was foul and just trying to still be in the process 100 percent, and then connecting with someone after the fact but also i honestly don't fault her for it judge me if you want to but i don't fault her for it because after the honeymoon ryan was pretty much checked out and while his mouth continues to say that he was going to try again and they're in a better place and he just need to go home and regroup and then come back. His actions really never changed. So she really had no hope to hang on to with their relationship as far as thinking this could be something and go somewhere past decision day. So child, if you exchange numbers with somebody and y'all got it popping, do your thing, Brent. Do your thing. <laughs> Brent says that um, things have been easier to deal with between the two of them because they pretty much had really cordial conversation and it's because they really didn't get too emotionally invested. So as far as it being a messy or nasty breakup, that wasn't the case for them because they didn't really get emotionally evolved enough for it to really cause those kind of ties between the two of them. So good for them. Next couple of we are going to talk about is Michaela and Zach and Cha. The theatrics and the drama still continue with the two of them. So Michaela and Zach are going to be talking to Kevin separately because at Michaela's request, she doesn't want to be um, in the room with him. She said it's to protect her energy and to be able to talk uninterrupted. So we see her talking to Kevin. Um, she said, of course, the wedding was great and we all saw that. And then after that, things kind of went downhill pretty fast after that. Michaela says she knew she needed to learn how to deal with her impulsive knee jerk reactions. Basically, she said from the initial argument, she felt that he was pretty much checked out from their relationship since then. The issue she had with him, she says, when asked was his lack of grace and compassion and that he always waited for the other shoe to drop. And I do agree. So while Michaela made it super easy for him to have all this stuff to be able to have against her per se as to why things didn't work out and for the other shoe to drop. I also think Zach's behavior really poked at the bear for him to get whatever reaction he wanted out of. So it's like poking at the bear, kind of waiting for the reaction because then it would have more, you know, add more gasoline to the fire of I told y'all this is who she is versus the poking of the bear of Michaela not giving him whatever she he is essentially asking for and trying to provoke her to bring out the Hurricane K. Um, so I see both sides of it, but I do feel like he was constantly waiting for the other shoe to drop just to have more ammunition as to why he's going to make the decision he's going to make at the end to not be with her. So we have to see all the emotions in the gaslighting of Zach all over again from him really uplifting her one day to the next day or the next few hours then kind of tearing her back down in the roller coaster we saw back and forth with them all freaking season the back and forth back and forth with them was exhausting child she says that they were both equally bl to blame for the fights and she shouldn't have participated in the fights the way that she did um they then and of course the whole time that they're doing this while they're talking they do flash back to zach in the back and he's uh, oh my god it, 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 He's having his own little fit in the background as well. They then bring out her sister Sharifa. So the sister that we pretty much just seen all season. And she says that she thought they were a good match initially. And right now her feelings towards Zach are indifferent. She feels that they both wanted to be right. And they were both stubborn, which I can definitely agree with is that they both wanted to be like, yes, you were right. I were wrong. And because both of them were so strong minded and so um, firm in how they felt and they believed things that neither one of them were kind of going to cave for the betterment of the marriage. 
Michaela says she agrees that she played, um, that he played with her emotions, and I believe that he did. We saw that on TV, and Zach is like, oh my God, this is what I can't. Zach, cut it out. Let's be 100% honest. You played with her emotions. While she flew off the handle and was a bit crazy at times, you definitely contributed and played with that child emotions to really, as much as you said you wanted to leave, you couldn't do this, you didn't want to do that, the same amount of times you would come back and smile in her face and hold her hand and actually sleep in the bed together and engage in these couple-like behaviors to really egg her on and to cause the whole emotions and confusion as to where y'all are going it was really it was hard for us to keep up with so we knew Michaela had to have a hard time with that she Michaela says that the one month anniversary they had was really a pick-me-up for their relationship and things happened she was like you know kissing and touching and if y'all remember during that one month they that's when they went with the hotel to the hotel they were real touchy-feely and then we saw the camera come back on like sometime in the middle of the night saying they had got hungry so they left to go get something to eat so we saw a little bit of that interaction but she says that Zach told her that if he had told anybody what they did or she it was she brought up this situation then he would deny it and of course he is in the other room having a tantrum and denying it as she's saying he would at this point I don't know who would believe between the two of them and honestly I really don't care because y'all ain't together y'all don't need to be together so let's just leave it alone at this point she says that after decision day he asked her to come back to his place um, and she went and I'm like, girl, that was stupid. He made it clear how he felt about you. But she said she would, she was at his place for like a week, cooking, cleaning, having sex. And I'm just like, girl, you was his lover and his secretary working every day of the week. Okay, girl. <laughs> but <laughs> Zach is still, the more she talks, the more he is having to fit up. I want to go out there. I need to go out there. She's saying all this. And I'm just like, y'all are a match made in hell. Okay. <laughs> Michaela says she sent a text apologizing for everything that had happened between them and she said that they think she thought that they would be best as friends after this whole let's say no decision day and then her going to his apartment um, and then she says then they met up the next day and Zach told her that he only wanted to be cordial in front of other people and again I'm like this is just makes no sense between the two of y'all why can't y'all just stop with everything stop with the communication stop with trying to interact with each other just stop it doesn't work and it's not serving either of y'all well so let's just leave it alone um kevin asks if she feels that she got played and she says she completely got played with zach and i'm like zach you knew you played mind games once again let's not act like she is pulling this out of complete left field she has some validity to what she is saying based on what you did we then see Zach come out and it's his turn to tell his side of the story. He says he came into this very excited to talk to her and was disappointed when she wanted to talk separately. I'm like, now, Zach, we, we know you weren't excited. This is, again, one of your little tactics to not look like the bad guy and to look like, see, I'm not the one that's that's encouraging this crazy behavior for us to be separate. I was excited for this to happen. Cut it out. No, you weren't. <laughs> He says that things went wrong when she mo moved out the first time. It, it was basically a red flag of how she would act in more serious situations that they had kids and things. And again, if you are telling us this now that things really moved sour that very first time she moved out, which was very, very early on in the marriage and you coming back into the house from being separated from the honeymoon and everything. Why didn't you cut it then? If you felt like at that point, Things were going downhill. There's really no way that we can recover. I'm just confused as to why he would just continue to go on and then just be surprised at the reactions and the things that are occurring. Don't make sense to me. <laughs> but he talks about him leaving the retreat. He says he was real calm, but it was just too much drama. He needed to leave. He says that she feels he abandoned her and she's back saying she's like, no, I don't feel that way. And Kevin says that I don't think anybody else feels that way that you felt like you um, were abandoning her in that moment. I think at that moment, although McKenna was acting crazy, we all just wanted y'all to separate and leave and just not even be in the same space together because it was too much, too much. Kevin acts what he would have done differently and he says that he would have left and this has been the worst relationship he's ever been in relationship situationship marriage date and work relationship friendship um everything this has just been the worst relationship he said he has ever been in 
And again, why continue to go through this if it's just was so bad? Kevin brings up how he would say things that were confusing. And he says, no, no, I didn't think it was confusing. And I'm like, Zach, <laughs> let's divorce and still, you know, hang out. But even if we hang out, I'm still not guaranteeing you that we'll be in some sort of relationship. Sir, you don't see how that can be confusing to someone. All the rest of us can't be crazy and you be the only sane one that thinks this process makes sense, Zachary. Like, make it make sense. That's all we want you to do is make it make sense. But he says everything he said on decision day was true. Again, still talking about the whole let's work it out, but let's not be together, but let's try to work it out. But even if it don't work out, it's okay if it don't work out, but we can still try. Whatever that is. Um... I'm like, Zach, you still ain't making no sense. You contributed to the re reactions in this crazy relationship. He said that they didn't kiss or anything on their one month, one month anniversary. And I am like, Zach, now I feel like you pushing the, you trying to test my intelligence at this point. Cause <laughs> y'all had a whole hotel room and you going to tell me y'all didn't even kiss on a one month anniversary went on the one month and one month anniversary y'all were in a good space on that day at least and in those hours we saw y'all had no problem so i i'm i'm not i am not gonna believe this he can put his hand on the bible and everything i'm not gonna believe y'all didn't even kiss on that one month anniversary zach get out of my face with this so at this point michaela really can't take it no more and she's ready to barge in and we see zach get stuttering he said you know i need my time alone she had her time alone like i just i can't see i can't see i can't see see here she i can't i can't i can't i can't, I can't. she whatever y'all we'll see the rest of that next week i guess between the two of them the toxicity of it all is too much Rachel and Jose. So we see Rachel is still Jose is still Jose in. And now Rachel is Jose <laughs> saying that they both got everything that they want. And I'm like, we have not let this narrative die down, die down yet at this point. OK, but I give this another four months at this point in the um, reunion. I was like, we get another four months out of this relationship and it is done. So Jose is still talking about this situation of locking his wife out was a oops. And I'm like, what the that's not a oops we're not gonna keep saying that it was not an accident so kevin just tells him like be honest be straight up because we know you know you were locking her out you knew what you were doing you were intentional in doing it like stop it right now and he says originally that wasn't the intent so originally the intent was to just lock the door to have her knock for you to get up and open the door like what what was the intent of the intent was to just not have her sleeping in the hallway sir he then says, um, you know, when he did it, he was about 1.30, I mean, about 12.30 in the morning. And he was like, well, she ain't here. So I guess she ain't sleeping here. So I'm going to start locking things up and went to bed. And he's like, you know, yes, I did it. I did it. I'm owning it. And I'm like, you ain't owning nothing, Jose. Everything we got to get from you about this whole situation has been like pulling teeth as if you were not utterly and completely wrong. <laughs> you was pissed. You locked her out. You wanted to prove a point being the little man that you are. So you locked her out point blank in the period. So they then play the conversation that they had again the day after he had locked her out and Rachel came back. And when I tell you them replaying this had my blood boiling all over again with Jose passive aggressiveness. I was ready to. I wanted to let him have it through the TV all over again watching it. <laughs> But as they are watching it, the two of them just giggling as if this ish is fun. This is not funny, Rachel. This is not funny, honey. He will do this again to you. Let's see how funny it is then. Anyway, Rachel talks about how she felt in the moment and she's, you know, saying, you know, how she felt hurt. She really had nowhere to go. Am I just supposed to sleep in the hallway? I went knocking on other people's doors. Nobody answered. What am I to do? And the whole time she's talking, we can see Jose is starting. The little man is starting to get agitated in the inside. And I'm like, if he wasn't in front of this camera right now, Lord knows what he would do. But you can see literally the blood start to boiling and he's really starting to get upset. Kevin asks if they are still together. Um, Rachel says that they broke up and went to commercial break. And I'm like, y'all not about to even play with my emotions like that. Because don't get me excited thinking Rachel done came to her senses. And we know good and goddamn well they still going to be together. <laughs> so it comes back. Um, they said that they believed they had gotten comfortable once the cameras went away. And their emotional connection that they had kind of fizzled out. 
Jose kept bothering her about unpacking her stuff because, of course, she had to move into his place because he had a house and all this stuff. So no surprise there. So they said that they separated for about a month, um, not too soon after decision day. And now they're in a place where they're still working through it. She's still not living in the home with them. She's living with her mom. But yet she said, you know, they go on dates. They talk on the phone for hours. So now at this point, supposedly their connection is coming back around and they should be moving more into the direction of fixing things and staying together versus actually having a divorce. And I'm like, Rachel, just use this as your opportunity to leave. Just leave. Because <laughs> she's she really she, but she said she felt like. Um, she just really got exhausted from all the bickering and everything that was being done by Jose. And I'm like, if you think that's going to get better, it's not, it's not things are with Jose. Things always get better for the interim. And then they go back to how they were before. This is, this is what we've seen the behavior from him be. So right now he's fighting for you. And he really wants things to work and he wants to show you that he can be a better person just so that he doesn't fail at this thing called marriage and for you to come back home. But please believe the behavior that he's exhibiting is still going to continue to resurface over and over and over again. Rachel, this is your chance to get out. Get out. <laughs> Anyway, they didn't talk about them going on some vacations, booking some trips, Jose not being so cheap no more, blah, blah, blah. I really don't care. Let's move on to Gil and Mirla. And let me say, honey, before we get into the two of them, both of them looked amazing at the reunion, honey. Um, Kevin asks Gil if he got red bottles and he flashes it. And I'm like, OK, I'm sure Mirla picked that out and probably paid for it. <laughs> But you look good, Gil. That beard does you well, sir, dog. I still wouldn't like you to want to be with you, but you looking a whole lot better with that beard, sir. <laughs> Gil said that he was expecting things to go slow, but it went even slower than expected. Mila said that she was a little bothered by his poking at times. Um, and Gil said that that was his first time hearing that. And I this was I was not surprised by her making this comment because I feel like I probably said it in a few of my reviews of I feel like she just brushes it off when he's kind of going at her, even though it's like, oh, let's you know, we do playful banter back and forth. But I'm like, Rachel, I mean, Mirla half the time did not look like she was enjoying this banter that was going back and forth between the two of them. So I was not shocked to hear her say that, you know, that kind of got on my nerves a little bit. <laughs> Gil then says that since decision day, they have not um, been together. Gil says 14 days after decision day, Mirla decided she didn't want to be with him no more, child. She said it was a variety of things that she realized um, that they were just too different and things that she said not that are non-negotiables really are. And I guess she felt like she was starting to bend too much as to what she said she really wanted. And she realized I don't want to bend. I want what I want and I want it now. She says there um, that the chemistry wasn't there initially, but it grew, but still not enough. And I'm like, Mirla, girl, now I don't know if you playing us now or you was playing us back then or because you was a little drunk or tipsy when you was talking to Dr. Pepper that time. But you getting all emotional saying he was everything you wanted. You didn't think that you would get everything that you wanted out of a partner and. You was just so happy to be with him and waking up next to him and talking to him and all this stuff. And I'm like, so how can you say all that and then now say that, um, yeah, that the chemistry just wasn't enough? Like you acted like you was really feeling him. So I'm confused. So based on her saying that, I was like, Mirla, I was not feeling you. And of course, like the very beginning with all the complaining and stuff that we saw, I was like, I'm not going to like her. And then she ended up growing on me for most of the rest of the season. But now I'm like, you looking like trash once again by acting like everything we saw was just a facade that you put on, but you still wasn't feeling your husband in that way. And I'm like, Gil was not perfect by any means. And towards the end, he was really getting on my nerves. But I think for at least 80% of the time, he was very accommodating. He was very slow and gentle with her as far as whatever she needed, letting her lead the way. Like he was pretty much a gentleman besides harping on, you know, her complaining and the finances. He didn't really push her to do anything that was outside of her comfort zone, which was very commendable of commendable of him. So I was just like, this is getting weird. Um, but Miller says financial stability was a big deal for her. And then Gil shares, I make like a hundred dollars more than her every two weeks. And I'm like, we really going to say this over a hundred dollars. 
Stop it, y'all. Stop it. <laughs> Mila says, you know, he's a great guy and everything. We're just not for each other. Gil says that everything that she is saying the second time he's hearing it first time basically he heard it when it was when she decided that she didn't want to be with him anymore he says he was blindsided because their relationship really was built on communication and the biggest issue he had was that she says she didn't feel anything from the very beginning and i do have an issue with that as well because that just that just seems really disingenuous of her if she really felt like that from the beginning and really played him and all of us in this process of acting like she was really feeling him he says that they talked before decision day about what they wanted and they both agreed that they would say yes on decision day so based on that conversation this man said he basically sold everything except his clothes his blender and hype <laughs> the talk and i'm like geez you was all in wouldn't you gil so for him for her to come out of nowhere and to basically say you know she wasn't attracted to him and she wasn't feeling him it was a shock to him. And honestly, at this point, it was a shock to me because I'm like, you held out on kissing him because you felt so big about it. Um, and then you finally kissed him, which, of course, made all us think you were really feeling him. And then you went the next step of actually consummating the marriage with him. So now it's like for you to say you didn't even like find him attractive and the chemistry wasn't there. I'm like, Mirla, just I, <laughs> what happened? What? I, I don't get it. But anyway, um, Gil says and he calls himself a dumbass that his dumbass decided to stay with her because, you know, he's a hopeless romantic. and He really wanted to see if things could still work out. So they stayed together for about another month before she decided that she would move out. And he said a few days before she was scheduled to move out. He just decided that he would move out. So they were no longer together. When Kevin asked Mueller. What are her thoughts about what he just said? She was just like, I'm not going to acknowledge them and I'm not going to be going back and forth with him. Mirla says that this is Gil projecting his insecurities of himself onto her. And I'm like, wow, Mirla, we we really we gonna lay it on thick, huh? <laughs> she says what she did, she felt was the best for him because he didn't seem happy around her and she doesn't want him to be unhappy or miserable. So basically her deciding for them not to be together and leave was in his best interest i'm like girl stop it it's the whole it's me not you stop it <laughs> um she says that she didn't love gil and she never said it but i'm like you never came out and said i love you but we did hear you say that you made the choice to love your husband you said that so you are just like Zachary and sending these mixed signals and then making it a play on words of I didn't say I love you. Girl, bye. Gil says he is still in love with her and he really starts to get a little bit emotional. We can see the eyes starting to get a little bit watery there. And I do feel bad for him in this moment. He says that if she wanted to get back with him, he probably would say yes. Like my heart and my head will probably say yes. But my head, of course, would know what have happened. So I would have to overcome that. Gil says that since all of this went down, it's been really tough. Because, you know, she told him she doesn't want to be with him and there was really no conversation there to try to fix it. It's just she don't want to be with me, so we're not going to be together. So since then, he's been going to therapy, to, but it's been hard. Um, and of course, when they he asked Mirla, so how have things been, been to you? And she's like, I've been OK. I'm like, dang, dang. So I'm with her saying she's OK and she really has no feelings either way about how she feels about him or how things went down. I'm like, yeah. You are either like a cold bitch, <laughs> Mirla, or you truly had us fooled and you really didn't have any feelings for him. But I don't know at this point what to think. But I'm sure at this point, whenever Gil gets on the phone with his mama, I'm sure she is finding every Spanish word she can to cuss out this half of Mirla for, help, for hurting her son. But I was shocked at the turn of events that happened between the two of them because I really did not see this coming from what we saw all season and how things had turned around with them and them staying together. I really didn't expect two weeks after decision day for things to go downhill with them so quickly. So then in this episode, we also see all the guys come together and basically all the guys have had a little bit of a glow up. And to be honest, if I didn't know they were all fuck boys, they would have had me fooled in this moment. But because I know they are all fuck boys, I ain't falling for it. <laughs> but 
We see all the tears from the top two fuckboys, Zach and Johnny, that we've seen all season. Johnny says that every time he left a conversation, he just needed a break. And Bao basically kept pressing. And I'm like, but Johnny, did you ever express to her that you just needed a break? Because it seemed like you were just walking away from the conversation and you really didn't want to hear what she had to say because it wasn't in agreement to what you were saying. So it's like you were just aggravated and agitated by the conversation not that i just need to take one or two minutes away and then we can come back and finish and talk it talk through with level heads but maybe that was just me <laughs> they didn't show how patient gill was with mirla most of the season and the other guys said that they would have dealt with it the same way and i'm like y'all is lying especially you johnny you are lying Ying, if you got this hard of a time from somebody you know good and got damn well <laughs> you would have not handled this the way that gill handled mirla Kevin asks if the guys were shocked when Marilyn ended things and um, they say they were all rooting for them and they seemed so solid. So they really were all surprised. Gil said he was never insecure about being with anyone now, um, but now it's become his number one thing of being insecure. And again, I do feel bad because at this point I'm like, Mirla, I feel like you you played him a little bit like you changed. You started liking this man dog. You kissed him. You had sex with him. You stayed married to him said all this stuff and then like just to leave him two weeks after that that is whoo okay zach said he wasn't surprised about jose and rachel breaking up because of what they went through and he was surprised more surprised that they had actually worked their way back together he said he was impressed by the way jose is now working so hard to get rachel back and you know keep his marriage together ryan says that while he thinks friends um did not influence the breakup between jose and rachel he thinks that some people enjoyed rachel being signal he says i'm not gonna call no names but gil's wife so i'm like Okay, so shots fired at Maryland the whole time he's say, saying this. Jose is like shaking his head and agreeing of so I I would love to know what else has gone down that we do not know about. But he says that the two of them, so Mirla and um, Rachel have become really close and Mirla really enjoys the single Rachel. So I'm like, Ryan, shady boots, shady boots. Um, Johnny said he is friends with them as well. And he's definitely friends with Rachel. And really, he tried to give Jose tips on, you know, what to do with Rachel because he had that little bit of an insight to try to get them two back on track. And again, I'm like, Johnny, stop it. Let these two go their separate ways and live a much healthier, happier life. OK, and then we see the bromance between Johnny and Jose that we saw all season so that we know deep down inside this is the true couple that should have been matched together. But whatever, y'all. <laughs> So next week, we're finally going to see Johnny and Bao um, talk and see how things um, met up with them. We'll see the conclusion, hopefully, of Zach and Michaela. And then we'll see that we'll get some input from the experts. And I'm like, whoo, the, the reunion was spilling all the tea. And I actually really did enjoy um, getting to hear a lot more information and seeing where things had been since decision day, because I think we all knew the people that were going to stay together, but we also didn't have confidence in those people making it long term. So, yeah, it looks like we were spot on and they called it quits pretty soon after. <laughs> so let me know y'all thoughts from the reunion. Um, how are y'all feeling now? Has your opinion of anyone changed since what we've seen now from what we saw all season? Let's chat it up in the comments and I'll catch y'all next week for one last time. Part two of the reunion. Peace.